This is just a quick update on my progress on my utility gadget. As you can see, the screen is off, but it's on because we have power saving now. So this is the current alliteration of it. I'm not going to go through the details of it working on the computer because you've already seen that. So this menu is still the same. This is our back button now. So we can, we got icons now. So you can now disk image. We now have a SD card detection for the second card. So when I plug in the card, it shows up as an option to uh, not only flash an image to it, but we can directly send it over like a micro USB T a micro SD to USB adapter. Excuse me. Sorry, I had to cough there. Um. So yeah, we can now flash images to the card. We can also. Do a couple of new things, but one of them is the format menu. So choosing a file system on here will wipe the partition tables, create a partition the size of the device, and then format it in one of the selected file systems. So we're going to wipe this 8 gig test card with FAT32. And again, we're going to get prompted. Well, you, didn't, you guys didn't see this yet, but we have a dual prompt system. Make sure you want to overwrite yes. Then I switch the buttons around just to make sure. Are you absolutely sure? Yes. This does a lot of stuff in the background. Like all the formatting text and everything. We hide it. So you'll get a error or success based on return codes. Um, if we eject on here. It detects that and removes it. And then, you know, in and out. In and out. Wi-Fi is an interesting one. So I added a feature to be able to launch terminal with keyboard. So we got a minimalistic keyboard called Matchbox Keyboard. So if we open this, it's going to launch. Well, it looks like we ran into a quick bug right here, which gives me a chance to show you what happens when we run into a bug. So, as you can see, the buttons are disabled. I turn off and gray out the buttons when we activate a function to prevent double tapping. But, the menu back and the reload button, for the most part, are not affected by JavaScript errors. So, if we hit reload... It's going to save a cookie of what menu we're on. It's going to refresh the page, load the cookie, delete the cookie. And that's how it knows that what menu we're on. So now that I fixed it, this is how it works. You get this keyboard, and you get a very tiny, I can't even get the phone to focus on this. It's so small, version of the Network Manager TUI. And since we can't tap, things in here we can use the keyboard in a worst case scenario to set up our Wi-Fi and then when we're done it bounces back here uh, I showed this briefly in the last video but I'll show you the updated version this is um, the last time you saw it, it was running on light HTTPD now we kind of run our own PHP server in the node script and I've also fine-tuned it a little bit. That should go away. That's a bug, but whatever. Because this is how you get back out. But that's actually cool. I'll keep that in mind because I am going to need like a global escape button. But anyway, that's the progress so far. We can like turn on and off so I have it on right now because I load it all up in Visual Studio Code but it's when I turn on the device Samba's off by default to save you know to speed up booting so I could turn it on only when I need it SSH is on by default but eventually that'll get turned off and uh, 
Webman is definitely off by default, but if I ever need it, I can turn it on here. And yeah, um, I don't know if I explained these in the other videos or if you've seen them, so I'll go over it quick. Uh, this menu, static, we, this device becomes a static IP with a DHCP server that doesn't send a gateway, it just sends a local IP on a slash 27 subnet. And that just allows Windows to connect to it enough for you to SSH into it and stuff. On the other hand, the other button is the other way around. So this will be a client, kind of like your computer, and it'll ask Windows or Linux or whatever you plug it into for an IP, which is good if you're like doing internet connection sharing. Say you have to take out the USB dongle, ignore that. I do that to prevent the dongle from breaking or the port from breaking again because this is my second dream catcher thankfully I do not replace the first one but um if you were to remove this dongle to say plug in a hard drive or a keyboard you could use this setup to have internet over to OTG but usually you would click static so that you can quickly connect to it uh, that's the reload button this is back yeah, that happens sometimes. This is basically emulating a cursor, but I have the cursor hidden. So if I did that, there would be a pointer right there. Um, this does work with a finger. It works with anything. It's uh, not capacitive. It's pressure sensitive. So I use this just because it has a fine tip on it and it's easier. But I am trying to sort it out in a way that I would be able to get away with using fingers. Um... ISO, we don't do DVDs yet. I did try a DVD patch in the kernel, but it doesn't work quite right. But yeah, eventually I hope to be able to also emulate DVD-ROM over mass storage, which would actually probably be beneficial to the Linux community as a whole, because I don't think anyone's done it in the kernel yet. So... That's my progress so far. And again, this is just a little hobby project. There is no downloads for it. I probably won't release this. Maybe I will. I don't know. I put a lot of work into it. For myself. And I don't know. Let me know in the comments if you're interested. But no, no guarantees. And actually, don't expect a release. But this is just kind of showing off what we can do with the Dreamcatcher. What you can do is um, in the description I'll put below, I reverse engineered the device tree binary and rewrote it into a proper device tree source. So now we can include that into Linux kernel. So I'm not being totally selfish here, but... Yeah. All right, that's all for me for now. Thank you for watching, and give this video a like if you like this kind of stuff. Catch you next time.